Hi guys, um, this is just a quick video to get you started. Um, if you go to the syllabus page of our course website, you can take a look at the schedule, which is here. And uh, this is basically to kind of go through that first class. Uh, and you'll see that uh, under the modules um, in week one, getting started, um, there's not only a general purchase guide of where to buy uh, things and the two main websites we've been looking at are essentially this one uh, SparkFun and then Autofruit. Um, there are some things that overlap you know they each have their own versions of different things but generally I think SparkFun is a little bit more user-friendly so you know I would kind of look at there first um, they often have great tutorials so there's a lot of great tutorials for different things. Um, Autofruit actually does have a lot of nice guides um, as well. And we'll kind of look at those as time goes along. So um, we'll go through this in class in terms of the different you know, boards that are available and what to buy. But for now, um, I'll just uh, kind of assume that you have the basic uh, SparkFun breadboard or the normal um, Arduino. So uh, the red board, this is the normal Arduino Uno, and this is the SparkFun red board. Okay? Um, and then if we go to installing Arduino plus Firefly, um, this is roughly the order in which you want to go ahead and start um, installing things. So I would generally start with Arduino, um, download the Windows installer here and just run it. Um, this is the same file I've hosted on the course website as well. And then if you don't have Rhino installed already, you, you know, need to do that of course. Um, and then you can download Grasshopper, just put in your email um, and add that in. Uh, same thing, this is the latest Rhino uh, Grasshopper build. And then Firefly. Uh, one of the sites is the Firefly sort of base site. And then the other link is to the Food for Rhino you know, site. And I think you can do it both. I think if you download here, it just brings you to the Food for Rhino site anyways. Okay. Um, Installation files here, 64-bit, 32-bit, based on, depending on what your OS is. Um, if you're not sure about your OS, you can always go to or find, whoops, find the equivalent of your My Computer, um, and, you know, it will tell you, or it should tell you, what system type it is, in this case 64-bit. Okay, and then uh, Lunchbox is a plugin that's kind of handy, um, so I suggest installing it. It's actually hosted on Foodflow Rhino as well, so if you type Lunchbox, uh, this one, this is the Lunchbox plugin, um, there's a lot of handy tools. So I would install that when you have a chance. Okay, so that's the install um, sequence. Now, the first time, and after you install, you know, you'll get, you know, the Arduino uh, thing here. Let me close out of my Rhino. And you run it, you'll get essentially the Arduino ID as a blank interface. Um, right now, there shouldn't be anything connected um, if you're just starting it right now. And then that's why in this case, if I go, go, go to tools, serial port, the serial port um, you know, is grayed out. I can't you know, pick anything, right? So uh, now I can actually go ahead and plug in my Arduino board to the USB. And you should hear your system beep or whatever. 
um, once you're sure it's connected, you know, and the power is going through, if this doesn't automatically change, um, then close Arduino, start it again, and it should auto detect. Now to make sure, first of all, your board is set correctly. Um, so it should be an Arduino Uno in most uh, most cases. As you can see, there's actually a lot of different other types. Um, and then the serial port should be checked automatically. Uh, sometimes you'll get more than one. Uh, let's say if you connected more than one board, then you have it on, you know, COM3, COM5, COM7, COM1. Um, they're just different addresses, um, so to speak. Okay. And then to check that uh, everything's working, go to File, Examples, um, Basics. And then the one we use the most is Blink. Um, and it opens another sketch. You can close this if you want to. Um, it turns on sketch. The, here's the, uh, the code. It's very simple. And what you want to do is to click here on Upload. And we click on Upload, you'll see this progress bar running. And essentially, it's sending that code, uploading that code through the USB into the Arduino. And if you look at your Arduino um, in the little, little uh, LED check light next to pin 13 and ground, it should be flashing on and off at uh, one second here. So here you see 1,000 milliseconds. So it turns on and off, on and off. Now if you have modified this, these numbers obviously, so if it changes to 2,000, and then I upload it again then it will blink on for two seconds then off for two seconds etc etc okay so this is the sort of basic code version of this all right so that means it's connected um, however since we're going to be using Firefly with Rhino uh, what to kind of get the Arduino board to interface with Firefly in Rhino, uh, in Grasshopper, what we need to do is upload a different sketch. Now if you have Firefly installed, then it should pop up here in the sketchbook. Uh, under sketchbook, there's a Firefly uh, Fermata. So click on that and open this. Now if you can't find, um, this doesn't show up automatically. Uh, you should be able to, if your install went correctly, you should be able to go to your documents, Arduino, and you'll see you know, a couple folders along with libraries. This is where there's a couple other um, libraries, but this is the Firefly Fermata. This is where you would generally find it. Okay, so Arduino, Firefly Fermata. Okay, so I'm gonna close the blink uh, not save the changes and then upload this okay um, once it says it's done uploading here and Arduino Uno on COM3 in my case uh, then we can fire up Rhino and we know that the Firefly Fermata is already in our um, Arduino Um, and actually at this point, uh, you can actually turn off or close the Arduino window as well. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to start Grasshopper. Um, and let's see, Firefly is right here, right? So just to test uh, that it is working really quick, let's uh, pop in some components. So, COM ports available is the first one we're looking at on the very left. Open and close port. We need that. And then a Uno read or Uno write. You know, these, are, these are the ones that you'll be using the most uh, for the most part. Okay? Now, uh, with this, what we want to do is to drop in a panel, which you can find by going to parameters 
uh, wait, where is it? Parameters input panel. Right. Although I always just use the shortcut where you double click to bring up sh bring up the the uh, search panel and do two slashes to bring up the panel. It's the same thing. Okay, and do that. What this means um, is it's looking at COM port three, and the COM port three is the one that is uh, available or has something connected to it. Right. Uh, as a shortcut, I actually also zoom into these and turn off the draw paths, right click, turn off draw paths, and then right click, turn off draw indices. So you just have that. Um, and if you want to be even more sort of, you know, about things, you can zoom in and use this to align the center and use this to kind of align the number uh, just so it's more visible. Okay, and then we need a Boolean toggle, so I'll double click on the canvas, bring up Boolean toggle, which is set to false by default. This goes into the open. The port we want to open is number three. This baud rate should be set to um, the highest, uh, 115, 200 by default, so leave that. And if you want a message, then you know, just copy paste this over and swap it over. And you can do something like that. Okay. Uh, for the read, uh, it's more or less the same thing. These actually work exactly the same way. So you could actually just pull this into port, um, copy one of these into the start, and you just need you know another one of these for the message will tell you you know it's not on and what I often do is just copy a lot of these um, these are actually really small and I need to zoom in to bring this up again um, and it's saying null because there are no values in it right now um, because it's not activated So you can Alt-Drag, so hold down the Alt key, click on um, the component, whoops, and drag, drag, uh, click Alt, let go, drag, click Alt, let go. That's just kind of like a fast way to do this. And you can kind of reconnect all these. Uh, and you can, you can just like do this once and then eventually you save everything. Um, I'm just doing it right now. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, align it. Oops. Move everything. Something like that. Oops. This one should go there. Okay. These are just to kind of get all the readings that we want. Um, so if you turn on that then it says serial port is open uh, that means uh, it's starting to kind of read data from uh, serial port number three and if I turn on this toggle then you'll see oh I'm getting some numbers now you'll see that these aren't really moving these aren't real time so what we really need is uh, here in this case a timer and so I'll bring in a timer drag this by clicking on the arrow, drag it and connect it to the UNO read. And on the lower right, you should get a grasshopper timer block, sort of bubble pop up. Um, it's not showing here because I'm using only part of my desktop. So right click here, change the interval to something fast, like 20 or 50 milliseconds. And then you'll see, okay, uh, especially these analog input values are now fluctuating like crazy. And that's what it should look like. Okay. Now let's make sure that um, you're actually writing to it. So same thing. Let's grab the Uno write here. Um, let's do the same thing we're doing here. Let's just get our 
mes message balloons set up this one kind of wants to be high and skinny copy a boolean toggle actually you want to turn that to false first whoops okay and then same thing drawing from here the number three okay then turn this on and now you'll see so this these all correspond to one of these so that's 13 that's 12 blah 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 blah, blah. and for example since we know D pin digital pin 13 is connected to that LED um, on the board so let's actually just use a uh, button button object two values sign it into D pin 13 and now you'll see that when you press the button um, that check LED light should come up and you'll see that value that first value goes to high means that it's sending a high voltage signal to that uh, line or that pin essentially okay so uh, that's more or less it that's what this should look like uh, once you have things connected and things are running correctly this is the basic setup more or less for almost all um, Firefly related, you know, um, com uh, definitions, and so, you know, in some, in in a way, once you have this set up once, uh, that's all you need to do, okay? Um, and I would just save this. Uh, you can organize things a little bit better. Um, kind of this, if you want. Select them, and let's see align and distribute okay correctly that sort of thing you know just uh, clean it up and if you want to now you can kind of just like group them all together control G by selecting them control G group these you know uh, just make managing it easier now one thing I will mention is that um, before you, know, you can save the file but before you save the file for good, um, you actually want to turn these toggles to the off position. Um, especially if you sometimes, you know, if you're reading the data in real time, um, if you op do that at the same time you're opening the file, it can cause a crash. Or if you're, you know, sometimes the definition is, is expecting something else, right? And so you know, you'll get that sort of situation where it might crash um, the definition as you're opening it so uh, you probably want to avoid that um, because of that uh, before you save a definition I always turn this off 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 and then save it okay All right so I'm gonna save this and post this um, but you know that's sort of the quick and dirty uh, I'll see you in the next one